Hey everyone, what's up? So this is my micro fighter bot or micro robot version 2, which is a small robot that is powered by an Arduino Nano board and L29 3D motor driving IC. Four micro gear DC motor are being used here. I'm using a Bluetooth based mobile terminal app, which is available on the Google Play Store to control this robot. Yes, I'm using Bluetooth here. The good old HC01 module. Why? Because Everything is better with Bluetooth. <laughs> the goal for making this robot was to make a small robot platform that I could use in my next project, which is a fighting bot duo. Basically, I wanted to prepare a small but fast robot that can fight other robots. Not fight to death, but a normal sumo fighting kind of thing. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how I made this small robot in few easy steps. Also, this video is gonna be long, so tight your seat belts and enjoy the ride, or robot in this case. Hit that subscribe button. Previously, I have made a similar micro robot which only had two wheels. The problem with that bot was actually stability. It also could not navigate over obstacles such as rocky terrain, sharp or decline areas with low friction. To improve this, I prepared this robot which had four wheels. So it have a sturdy frame with a center of gravity at the centermost part of this robot as that would help in taking sharp turns at high speed. I designed this robot in Fusion 360 first. The idea here was to make a base that will be used to screw motor mounts from the bottom side of base. And with the three pillars, a PCB can be mounted on it. In between PCB and base, a lithium ion battery is placed. So this was the plan. Parts of the robot along with its Fusion 360 file can be downloaded from this project's page. The link is in video description. The first step for making a PCB project is to make a schematic that will have all the components that we need to run our project. I prepared a simple setup that consists of an Arduino Nano connected with the L293 d motor driver IC in its proper configuration. HC01 is also connected with the Arduino Nano. I have used a 12V 2.6A battery in this setup. It's not recommended to add 12V directly with the Arduino's V-in port. So I added an AMS1117 to step down this 12V into 3.3V for Arduino and HC01 to run without any issue. Here's the schematic that I prepared. After finalizing the schematic, I then imported its netlist and converted this into a PCB design. As for the PCB outline, I have used reference dimension from the Fusion 360 model and then made the PCB based on it. In the end, this was the result. I exported the Gerber data and then sent it to PCBWay for sample. After sending the PCBs for manufacturing, it only took 7 days to get delivered. The PCBs that I have received were nice as expected. PCBWay, you guys rock. Check out PCB way for getting dead PCB service at a less cost. Okay, before starting the assembly process, here's a quick fact. I'm using a HC01 module, which is pretty hard to find. You could easily find its breakout board version on the internet, but these modules are not exactly easy to obtain. Also, they cost a lot. So what did I did was I took one of my HC05 module and place it on my reflow hot plate and remove the HC01 module from its breakout board. Now let's get back to the assembly process. After receiving the PCBs, all that left to do was to apply solder paste to each component pad. I use normal SNPB solder paste which have a melting temperature of 140 to 270 degrees Celsius. After adding the solder paste, we need to do this pick and place process. I then use a ESD tweezer to carefully pick and place each component on their assigned place one by one, which only took like 3 minutes top. But in the end, the result was a perfect PCB with all the components placed in their right orientation. 
After the pick and place process, I carefully lifted the whole circuit board and place it on my DIY SMT hot plate, which is also homemade just like this project. After few minutes, when the hot plate reaches the solder paste melting temperature, all the components will get soldered by this hot plate reflow process. Now we have to add THT components to this board, which are header pins, DC jack, L293D IC and battery GST connector. I just use a regular soldering iron for this job. Now we put the Arduino Nano on the header pin and as you can see right here, I have added jumper pins on the PCB. These are connected in series with TX and RX. You see, if we add RX and TX of Arduino directly with HC01 on the PCB, without any breakout point, we will not able to program the Arduino Nano because of the UART error. I have added these two header pins on the PCB so I can short them. And by this, HC01 will communicate with Arduino Nano. When we have to program the Arduino Nano, we only have to remove jumpers from these header pins. You can also remove Arduino Nano from this PCB and program it with the sketch and then put it back on this PCB. This method will work, but it will be too much work for me, so I prefer to use header pin instead. Anyways, after doing this, our PCB is finally ready. But we still have to check if the circuit is working or not. For testing this board, I will use two things basically. First, I will use this battery which is a lithium ion battery pack, 12 volt. I have added a BMS on it, so we don't have to worry about many things related to its battery protection system. Anyways, we first add this battery on our PCB with the GST connector in the right polarity. Then we turn on the switch and our Arduino Nano along with HC01 are working. You can see the LED blinking in the HC05 and LED glowing in the Arduino Nano. This means that the both of these modules are working without any problem. Next, I added 12V 5A SMPS on the DC barrel jack. LED on the DC jack side is glowing which means everything is nice and dandy. Now, at last, I took out my phone and paired it with the HC01 module. I then opened a Bluetooth terminal app in my phone and connected the HC01 with it. As soon as it get connected, the LED stopped its frequent blinking sequence, which is a sign that the module is now connected with the device. So our PCB has now qualified its testing process. And now we will prepare the 3D printed base body, which will hold this PCB and other stuff. This is the assembly plan of this project. Here's this lower base that is holding four DC motors with a motor mounting bracket from the bottom side. Then these three pillars are on the opposite side. These pillars will be used to mount PCB and base together. In between PCB and base, a lithium ion battery pack is placed. So it is a compact setup that holds everything together nicely. Also, I'm using two different sizes of screws. This one is for attaching the motor bracket with the base and front shield. And this small one is for adding PCB to the pillar and the pillar on the base. As for the material for these 3D printed parts, I'm going with the transparent PLA and transparent yellow PLA. After adding everything together, I then added the battery in the middle part and connected its terminal with the GST connector. Then I added wires to the motor and PCB in this order. And this was the result. This is the code that I have used in this project. 
Uploading process is pretty easy and simple. We first remove the jumper from the HC01 header pins and then connected the Arduino Nano with our computer and flashed the bot with Arduino IDE and bang. Our micro bot is ready for its first test run. Note, do not forget to add jumper wires after the flashing process back in their places. Now the previous version was controlled by a blink app. But I am not using a ESP32 or ESP8266 in this project. We required a Bluetooth terminal app here. For that I am using this Bluetooth terminal app that you can download from Google Play Store. Open this app and paired it with your HC01. After that open its controller mode and assign the buttons their value which is in our case these. TL for turn left, TR for turn right, F for forward. R for reverse and S for stop. Now we just press any button to control this robot. As you can see your robot is working and it's pretty fast which was my goal to make it fast and sturdy as possible. Now this setup works like a development platform, a micro fighter platform. The idea here is to make multiple of these robots and let them do the fighting and stuff. Also we have to add few gimmicks in these bots like normal weapons, shield and armor. This project is completely open source so if anyone here want to make one of these robots then all the documents are attached in this projects page which you can then download. Comment if you need any more help. So this is it for today guys. If this video was fun then do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks PCBWay for providing PCBs for this project. Check out PCBWay for getting great PCB service at a less price. And I'll see you guys with the next video. Peace out.